Hi guys, it is a frosty winter night in October tonight here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. Ah, it is a, what is it, Thursday night, October 20th, 2022. So I am uh, racing through three snippets of the collapse tonight here on uh, Collapse Snippets. Uh, we just talked briefly uh, about uh, solar radiation management in my last video, and now we're going to turn our attention to greenwashing. And I'm sorry, I, I got so many of you guys filling my email with doom and gloom. I, I'm sorry, I can't even remember which one of you sent me this excellent article from some... <coughs> group called Green. Green, a small international nonprofit organization that works to support small farmers. Um, and they are, Green is, they have put together one of the best articles I have ever read in my entire life on corporate greenwashing at least coming from big ag about how these giant global multinational ag corporations like Cargill, uh, you know, based right down the street from me and Bunge and Archer Midlands and all the, the, the usual suspects about how they are guilty of greenwashing and so Grain is bringing us an agribusiness greenwashing glossary. And uh, if you want to read the, one of the best stories you're ever going to read about greenwashing, this is it. Now, even if I was doing 30-minute rants, I couldn't do this. I don't even know that this snippet will probably be a, uh, a, a full rant. Uh, but anyway, uh, I think they give us 10 greenwashing glossary terms to introduce it, and I'm starting in on down in the article. For those of us who are not aware of what greenwashing is, a principal tactic used by food and agribusiness corporations is greenwashing. Greenwashing is a marketing or advertising strategy where corporations recognize environmental problems but then use misleading or false information to make it appear as if they and the products they sell are providing solutions to these problems. If you look at the websites of the big food and ag corporations or browse through their annual reports, you would think that their mission is to fight climate change and save the planet. They claim to be committed to halting deforestation, solving the climate crisis, reversing biodiversity loss, and ending hunger. They also claim to champion human rights, including those of noble savages over their lands and territories. And yet, they continue to sell the same products and promote the same models of food production and consumption that are killing the planet and destroying people's control over their territories and biodiversity. Just as fossil fuel companies like Shell and Exxon have used greenwashing to make it appear as if they are serious about climate change, the big food and agribusiness companies are using greenwashing to confuse people and block actions that would jeopardize their profits. So in the following pages, we try to identify and demystify some of the key greenwashing concepts and false solutions 
that food and ag corporations use to derail effective action on the climate crisis. They don't define what effective action on the climate crisis is. So anyway, what they do, I think it's 10 different greenwashing uh, glossary terms. Uh, I think there's 10 of them. So it, you know, it defines the term and expands on it. And then they get to the bottom line. So I'm going to put the link on here. And you can go and, uh, and, and read all of the definitions and the minutiae and whatnot. We're just going to jump to the bottom line. I'm, I'm, we're going to read out these things and then get to the bottom line. And you can go back to fill in the blanks. So obviously we're starting with one of the biggies of all, and that is the BS notion of net zero. Bottom line, <clears throat> the only way to truly get to zero by 2050 is to eliminate all but the most essential greenhouse gas emissions. Nestle's emissions and those of other food and ag corporations are not essential. There are alternative low emission food systems that can feed the world without them. And uh, I don't confuse that with that organic agriculture could feed the world, although my guess is grain is is probably since I don't know this core I'm taking a wild guess that grain is committing the equally serious offense of uh, claiming uh, that organic agriculture can feed a planet of eight billion people I'm taking a wild guess here I don't know this for sure there's a little bit of lefty uh, you know, associated with this, but in this case, they're right over most of it. Uh, okay, we had a, a rant on this one a couple of days ago. Carbon offsets. Carbon offsets, bottom line. There is a whole industry of companies, consultants, and NGOs now working to generate carbon offsets through schemes like large-scale tree plantations or farming programs that claim to restore carbon to soils. There are no established rigorous standards or measurements governing these schemes, and the offset business is riddled with cases of fraud and biased calculations Moreover, projects are often based in rural areas of the global south where the cost of the projects and carbon price are lower, affecting local people's access to lands, water, and forest. Uh, <clears throat> this land grabbing in the global south for the massive offsetting of emissions, you know, from these giant uh, multinational corporations has been called out as carbon colonialism. And there you go. <coughs> carbon colonialism. Okay. This, the catch-all phrase, nature-based solutions. <laughs> nature-based solutions. You know, it's kind of like all these food packaging, natural ingredients. It doesn't mean anything. Bottom line, nature-based solutions are rightly described as nature-based dispossessions because of the massive grabs of people's lands and forests they require, in particular in the Global South. But they are also based on a fundamental fraud. They assume that emissions from burning fossil fuels can be permanently absorbed in equal amounts in forests, soils, and oceans. This is a false equation 
widely rejected by climate scientists. And they have a bunch of links here and more uh, information links. Okay, of course, we've heard this, we hear this one all the time on Manga Bay. These unadulterated zero deforestation pledges. This is their longest chapter uh, of m more. Okay, but getting to the uh, to the meat of the matter, corporate zero deforestation uh, plans are full of loopholes and lack enforcement and accountability. They only apply to certain types of commodities in certain types of forests and do not consider historical or indirect deforestation. Cargill can buy zero deforestation corn from lands that were deforested and grabbed from communities only a decade ago. Unilever can buy zero deforestation palm oil from plantations that destroyed forest not considered to be of, quote, high conservation value. Bunge can buy zero deforestation soybeans from converted pasture lands in Brazil's savannas, even though this is known to displace cattle production into the Amazon rainforest. What's more, when corporations are caught violating their own certification schemes, as repeatedly happens, there are few consequences because the, the schemes are voluntary and non-binding. And then they look at some examples of that. Okay, then we get to this uh, uh, vague phrase. Have you ever heard this one? Climate smart agriculture. Little dog, I'm going to put you up on the bed because this computer is often, it's awful heavy. Climate smart agriculture. There you go. The climate smart label can be applied to pretty much all practices of industrial agriculture, be they chemical pesticides and fertilizers, drip irrigation systems, large-scale monoculture, factory farming, or GMOs. As such, it greenwashes a model of agriculture that is one of the leading causes of the climate crisis and that must be urgently replaced. I admit I'm a little confused how drip irrigation made that list of uh, the usual suspects. Uh, I'd be curious to see what uh, grain has, what their complaint about drip irrigation is. But anyway, you might have heard this term. I, I love for this one, they have a, a space alien in a UFO. <laughs> uh, define, uh, explaining agriculture 4.0. <laughs> the term agriculture 4.0 is meant to blind people to the important political struggle over new technologies. Digital technologies and platforms could be designed to support small food producers and workers and help build food sovereignty. But most technologies and digital platforms in, I guess, the 4.0 agriculture today are controlled by corporations who profit from exploiting workers and farmers while their data is grabbed. Yes. Uh, okay, next. This is one that, uh, you know, Rhett Butler at Manga Bay is a huge fan of, and that is regenerative agriculture. They start out by saying regenerative, regenerative, 
Regenerative agriculture is another one of these catch-all phrases that uh, you know is used to describe so many different things that you that uh, no one knows what the hell anyone's talking about. It could mean so many things, uh, but the bottom line. Uh, is the term regenerative agriculture has been so well co-opted by big ag corporations that it is probably best avoided when describing farming practices based on agroecology and food sovereignty. So I guess the agroecology uh, is where this are. I guess they're okay with agroecology, uh, but don't buy this greenwashing term, uh, regenerative farming. And then we go from uh, regenerative farming to carbon farming. Um, so. <laughs> What is, there are major flaws with the carbon farming programs. To start with, they produce offsets that corporations buy to avoid necessary cuts to their own emissions. So we're already getting, you see all of these are tied together. But even if we leave this fundamental problem aside, any offset program must, at a minimum, guarantee a permanent removal of carbon from the atmosphere. Carbon farming programs provide no mechanism to keep carbon in the soil beyond a mere 10 years when carbon needs to be stored for at least 100 years to meaningfully make a difference to global warming. Uh, anyway, goes on and good Lord, this keeps going. Okay, how about the bioeconomy? The bioeconomy. Under the umbrella of the bioeconomy, biofuels have been trying to make a comeback, presented over a decade ago as an alternative to fossil fuels and a source of green energy able to tackle climate change. The expansion of monocultures to produce biodiesel and ethanol soon raised concerns. Um, due to competition for the arable land used to produce food and the increase of greenhouse emissions, it became evident that if the scale and intensity of the food production model was not reversed, the energy based on biofuels could not be considered renewable. Yes. Uh, the agribusiness pitch for bioeconomy is increasing land grabbing and deepening ecological damage, especially in the biodiverse countries of the global south. All right, one more green finance. Green finance, you know, talking about the uh, banksters behind it all. <clears throat> Green bank loans and capital market loans become conditional to an existing sustainable project or the fulfillment of environmental and social goals. You know, these are those ESG bullshit that you've heard about. When applied to food systems, green finance is linked to the production of large-scale agriculture commodities and to those nature-based solutions. With big financial companies like BlackRock 
holding the reins, it is not surprising that the green finance flowing into agriculture is mainly going to large agribusiness corporations for the expansion of agricultural commodity production, albeit now labeled as regenerative, climate smart, or zero deforestation. With green, with green finance, Wall Street intends to add nature into an asset extending its control over the world's large agri-food, land, and natural resource corporations. No ESG criteria can reverse this situation. We need finance and investment to be under public and community control, oh yes, and out of the hands of the big financial corporations and the agribusiness companies they are invested in. Good luck on that, you bunch of hippies. But anyway, uh, I highly suggest you go on this link and uh, educate yourself if you are one of these uh, probably lefty, clueless morons uh, believing one word uh, of, of this greenwashing crap when you're going up and down the aisles of Whole Foods or Wegmans or, or wherever uh, these little uh, clueless moron lefties go shopping to save the planet. It's all a pile of crap. All of it. It's bright green lies. Anyway, I gotta wrap this uh, one up. I think that might have been a full chronicle of the collapse, even though I barely touched the story. We're going to come back and talk very briefly about how to save yourself during a nuclear attack. Coming up in one minute.